Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Laura Prada from the Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. And we start in the United States where the Congress will not support military intervention in Venezuela, according to the House as Representative Foreign Affairs Chairman. Representative Elliot Angel made a statement during a hearing on the political situation in Venezuela. Speculations over possible, a U, a possible U.S. military intervention began after President Donald Trump said it was an option. But I do worry about the President's saber rattling his hints that the U.S. military intervention remains an option. I want to make clear to our witnesses and to everyone else watching, U.S. military intervention is not an option. Congress decides when, where, and how the U.S. military is used around the world, <coughs> and Congress would not support military intervention in Venezuela. During the hearing, Congresswoman Ilan Omar clashed with the special envoy to Venezuela over the U.S. military role in Central and South America in the 1980s. Omar questioned Abraham's integrity in the wake of the Iran-Contra affair when he withheld information from Congress. Mr. Adams, in 1991, you pleaded guilty to two counts of withholding information from Congress regarding your involvement in the Iran Kortra affair, for which you were later pardoned by President George H.W. Bush. I fail to understand uh, why members of this committee or the American people should find any testimony that you give uh, today to be truthful. While this was happening, President Donald Trump welcomed his com Colombian counterpart Ivan Duque to the White House. Duque's right-wing administration has been loyal to the United States since he took power in April 2018. When speaking to the press, Trump contradicted the House Representative for Foreign Affairs earlier said statements, iterating the threat of direct military intervention in Venezuela. Meanwhile, President Duque confirmed his government's plans to support the U.S. position. Duque's visit comes a day after a number of political sectors and social organizations in Colombia demanded that the president refrain from involvement in any type of military intervention in Venezuela. In a 16-page letter addressed to Duque, they outlined the ways in which the government of Colombia has acted in a manner which has serious implications. Signatories rejected the use of Colombian territory by the U.S. military for war operations under Latin American neighbor. Our correspondent in Washington, D.C., Jorge Gestoso, has more details about these events. Thank you. President Ivan Duque of Colombia met this morning with President Donald Trump here in Washington at the White House. The issue of Venezuela was taking center stage of the press conference they gave after their meeting. President Trump says that uh, military options or interventions in Venezuela, it's on the table and all the options are on the table and then he says that he believes that uh, humanitarian aid as he called it is going to be distributed but even though one of the bridges that they were thinking to bring it across the border is with Colombia it's been uh, closed there are many other options he said that beyond any military intervention of beyond all the strategy that they are following in order to overthrow the government of President Maduro. He has plan B, C, D, E, and he was joking that he has multiple options. On the other hand, uh, President Ivan Duque is here to coordinate the overthrowing of President Maduro. He's going to meet with the people of the OAS uh, on Friday. And also he announces that uh, that group that uh, Colombia is having a very active role called the Grupo de Lima is going to meet against in Colombia. And of course, he's going to be leading. Analysts are saying that all that loyalty of, that has President Trump with Colombia is going to be repaid with the fight, with the failure of fighting 
President Duque against narcotrafficking and against the proliferation of drugs. Over 200,000 hectares of uh, coca leaf is still on in Colombia, even more than the president before. And it uh, seems that the U.S. is going to put like a blind eye on that. He's going to look to the other side, President Trump, in order not to condemn the lack of commitment that uh, Colombia has in that sense. So in, in conclusion, President Duque came here to implement once more the overthrow of President Maduro, and he actively is uh, meeting with all the voices, uh, among them uh, Elliot Abrams, in order to try to go back to his country and uh, accelerate the pressure, putting more and more pressure uh, against the government of President Maduro. We get back to you now. Thank you, Jorge. And Venezuela's President Nicolás Maduro has made a call for the international community to support the campaign for sovereignty promoted by Venezuela. This comes as response of the threats of a military intervention by the United States after President Trump's declarations. Today, once again, the President of the United States has threatened it with a military intervention in Venezuela. So I ask to all the peoples in the world to join in solidarity and that we continue with the campaign, hands off of Venezuela, Donald Trump. President Maduro, Maduro also said that Venezuela is not a bagger and a, as the country has enough resources to produce and cover its needs. Venezuela is not and will never be a bigger. We have enough resources with our lands, with our working people to produce what we need. And I stand with all the strength and given by the truth. By this we go to a first break here from the South. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Telesur English and at Laura Pitelesur. Stay with us. Enjoy our programming from Monday to Friday, where you'll find the best information on culture, innovation, conservation, human well-being. Keep up to date on the latest innovations in science and technology with Adamun. The habits and knowledge you need to live a healthy lifestyle are on Guide Your Body. Environmental consciousness is required to preserve our Earth. Undergo your transformation on Green Zone. All about equity, diversity, and respect for identities on By Gender. Cultural manifestations, the art in all its forms, and the stories of real lives. Every day we feature a wide variety of content only on Telesur, the news source from Latin America and the Caribbean. Para mantenerme saludable, yo corro. To keep myself healthy, I study. Y en la dietilizo y es trefo me asusta. Para mantenerme saludable, yo bailo. Para mantenerme saludable. Yo purifico mi espíritu a través del cuerpo. ¿Y tú? Get your body. Tuesdays, only on Telesur. Our actions have an impact on the environment. It's our responsibility to change for the sake of our planet. Let's be part of this transition. Watch, preserve, and protect your green zone. Wednesdays.
only on Telesur. Back in Argentina, a massive march of social movements and develop, it has, was developed against the economic policies of Mauricio Macri's government. Our correspondent Edgardo Esteban with the details. Important mobilizations in Buenos Aires and in different states to protest against economic difficulties, unemployment, homelessness and hunger. It was conducted an act close to the Ministry of Social Development to ask for emergency assistance to provide funds to these sectors that don't have jobs and need money to feed. They are also asking the National Congress to tread an emergency law to be able to have funds and deliver food to these sectors. From this perspective, it's important the mobilizations. There was a repudiation in the International Monetary Fund to deliver a new quota, which means a greater adjustment. It's anticipated that there will be more protests starting next week and a general strike. The sound of drums reverberates throughout the city. This mass demonstration reached downtown Buenos Aires where social movements demanded that Mauricio Macri's government provide them with bread, work and dignity. They also want the president to put an end to austerity measures that have greatly impacted the poor. We don't want neoliberalism to leave us in misery, for it to condemn countless families into hunger. We are here to call out the failure of this government's economic policies. While the government and media corporations take aim at marches, workers demand social programs and a food emergency law to support soup kitchens. On top of this, they ask that mass laws be stopped for good. There is widespread hunger in Argentina. Many kids are not able to eat more than once a day. Our government looks to the other side and will only talk about Venezuela. There are so many issues that need to be resolved here. We need politicians to help those in need. Protesters outrightly rejected the government's economic measures, calling them repressive. They are accusing the government of bowing to the demands of the International Monetary Fund. This is not about them being unable to help. It's about two different points of view. These economic policies favor certain groups. They favor one single social class, poverty, unemployment. They are a direct consequence of the government's policies that are working to please the International Monetary Fund. Argentina's opposition wants the government to pay the ultimate political price for the measures that are hurting those who have the least. Social movements will continue to mobilize as inflation and unemployment continues to rise. And the special jurisdiction for peace in Colombia has called 11 former FARC militants to declare this Thursday. The hearing is aimed at clarifying the conflict in Tumaco, Ricuarte and Barbacos in southern Nariño. Between 1990 and 2016, the trial will be recorded to be shown to victims so they can add their own remarks. The court dismissed the request by the parties who asked for the court to be suspend the hearing of the case 001 starts these Thursdays. It was already announced and it will continue until May 27. In Haiti, protesters against the government of President Jovenel Moise continue for the seventh day in a row called by opposition sector. In the capital, the opposition concentrated at the surroundings of the government palace and the international airport demanding the president's resignation and the, violation, and the violent days of protest condemn the high cost of life, insecurity and handling of the public funds by the authorities. Both the president and the international community advocate for dialogue to solve the political and economical crisis that hits the country. Go. 
And following this, act, this news in Haiti, the Caribbean community CARICOM expressed deep concern about the situation in the island. CARICOM is calling for calm and an end to the ongoing violence, appealing for all involved to engage in dialogue and respect the constitution. The regional bloc said this will allow the situation to be resolved peacefully. And a Sudanese refugee held in one of Australia's offshore migrant detention sites for six years has been awarded a human rights prize. Abdulaziz Muhammad was awarded the world most prestigious Martins Annals Award for his extraordinary tenacity and courage in protesting the Australian government's inhumane practices for years. Canberra uh, uh, has been sending asylum seekers trying to ent enter the country by boat to Manus Island for Nauru in the Pacific for processing. Those found to be refugees are barred from res resettling in Australia. This is, I think, significant. It's the first time in the history of the award um, that it has been conferred upon someone um, who is advocating in relation to rights violations perpetrated by a Western liberal democracy. But all I can say, it is inhumane condition and it's a cruel. And no one deserves to be in such a places. Until today, there are about a thousand men there who are desperately need and humanitarian evacuation from the islands. Time for a second short break. Stay tuned. en cada una de sus luchas. Somos esa ventana que se abre para visibilizarlos entre fronteras. Thursdays, only on Telesur. The life is full of moments. Moments of fight. Moments of hope. Moments that present. Moments that you can live in. Telezul documentaries. Sundays. Only on Telezul. An occasion to enjoy the cultural diversity that defines our South American essence. Come along to find out the story behind these personalities, traditions, and artistic expressions that unite us as a whole. Real Lives, Friday, only on Telesur. And hundreds of factories in Belgium were closed for the day as the country came to an almost complete shutdown because of a trade union protest. Demonstrators are demanding better employment benefits, early retirement, better education. On Wednesday, flight operations were reduced. Railways and seaports were also affected. Now we are going to Madrid where the political forces of Spain are preparing to convene general elections after not overcoming the budgetary process presented by the head of government, Pedro Sánchez. Our correspondent, Adriana Cardoso, with the details.
Good night to all and greetings from Madrid. This Friday we'll be able to convene the general election in Spain. This is because today the Congress of Deputies has led the general Bosch for 2019. This is a scenario was seen since the week past when the vice president of the government, Carmen Calvo, said they had broken the negotiations with the independence parties. The chief of the popular party, Pablo Casado, has demanded that Pedro Sanchez convene an election as soon as possible. And the International Court of Justice has ruled Iran has legal claim to recover $2 billion in assets frozen by the United States government. In the ruling issued on Wednesday, the court is the Hague says Tehran can proceed with a bid to recover the assets. The court also rejects the objections presented by the U.S. and urged for the lift of some of the actions. That Iran relies one unanimously rejects the first preliminary objection to jurisdiction raised by the United States of America. And talking about this, the International Court of Justice ruled out that Iran's effort to recover the $2 billion of assets frozen by the United States can proceed. Tehran said the U.S. has illegally taken Iranian financial assets based on in the Netherlands. The ICJ is the United Nations top court, but it has no power to enforce its decisions. The case comes at a tense moment between the two countries as the Trump administration unravels bipartisan agreements. Now let's take a look at other stories from around the world. Journalist Maria Rusa has been arrested in the Philippines as President Rodrigo Duterte continues to crack down on critics. Rusa faces charges of cyber libel. Meanwhile, press freedom advocates have branded her arrest as persecution. President Duterte has amassed a number of high-profile critics opposing his anti-drug campaign, which has claimed thousands of lives. At least 12 students have been injured in an explosion at a school in Indian-controlled Kashmir. The cause of the blast was not immediately clear. The Indian part of Kashmir has been plagued by separatist violence for years. Clashes between security forces and militants have killed more than 100 civilians over the past year. We were in class. Suddenly, we heard a blast. Someone said that it might be a transformer. However, when we went out and saw that it came from a classroom, five, six boys went there. After that, we don't know what happened. Two Syrian nationals have been arrested in Germany on suspicion of crimes against humanity while they worked for the Syrian intelligence services. The two suspects stand accused of torturing opposition activists between 2011 and 2012 when they both left Syria. They were arrested in Berlin. Six survivors, some of whom live in Germany, testified against one of the two detainees. And before we end the show, as part of the international campaign launched by Telesur called Drums of Peace for Venezuela, the video we are showing you next is a message against war in Venezuela and the rest of the world. Telesur released this song performed by Cuban singer Raul Torres, featuring a number of musicians from the region. Cajun Torres expressed his support and respect for Venezuela. That's why he wrote on Boris de la Paz, Drums of Peace. The ten gives a breath of hope before the constant aggression of the United States and the world trees. We must learn to live with those that don't understand us, to have a future where we can breathe. So express the lyrics of the song, where Torres had the collaboration of other musicians. The song is part of the campaign nominated Tampores de la Paz para Venezuela, Drum of Peace for Venezuela. This initiative seeks to participation of the peoples as an example of integration and solidarity with the Bolivar nations. Like this, we've come to the end of this new brief, but you can find this and many other stories on our website, telesurenglish.net, where, of course, you can find opinion articles and watch our stories, and especially this video we just presented you. Continue with Telesur, connecting the global thousands. Until next time, thank you for watching.